Our buddy uh, Brad Stanton's up next. Wants to know how Brock was feeling before his match with Lucha, uh, Luchasaurus. Uh, has he ever wrestled a dinosaur before? No, and nor have I. Uh, but he's a, you know, the the giant, whatever he is, he's a big, strong dude. Um, Brock is just chomping at the bit just to get out and just to compete and, uh, you know, be a part of the company. Um, he would, There was no angst about him. He knew he was overmatched in size and strength and experience and all those things. He knew that. I never saw one look in his eye that was like, you know, maybe I shouldn't, maybe it's too soon for me to be in a spot like this. Never saw that from him. You know, here's a guy that's had 40 matches or 45 or whatever he's had. That's not a lot. And uh, he just wants to be a part of the company. And, uh, we, you know, I would love to see him get more plugged in. And uh, just if, if nothing else, just get to wrestle more at the shows, even if it's dark matches in front sure. of live, live crowds. And he's, you know, he loves the business. He's a smart kid. You can sit down and talk business with him, and he's like talking to a, a guy that's had 10 years experience. Of course, he grew up around myself and Flair and a lot of smart guys. You know, Dusty, you know, he was, you know, he's heard the philosophy, and uh, he's been at our, our table and ate dinner, and when we're talking, we talk business sometimes watching the show. Uh, it's not like dinner's a sacred thing and there's no talking business at the table. Shit, we talk business at the table, and he, and he understands and he gets it. I got to ask you, so you obviously accompanied him, and you and Christian take some verbal jabs at each other. Do you still get butterflies in those moments? Because it doesn't happen as often, obviously, that you come out on television anymore. But when you do, you got the mic, you're coming down the ramp. Do you still get a little bit of butterflies, or is this like old hat for you still, Arn? No, God, no. I love it. You know, and if it's if you get a happen to get a nice reaction because they remember you in that town and you weren't what they were looking of everybody in the world of wrestling they were looking for come through that shoot. They weren't expecting you and you get that reaction. Yeah, Greensboro. Mm. You know, it was like we live and breathe and the reason we do this or the right reasons, the, those of us that have always done it for the right reasons. There is no rush like going through that curtain, taking your maestro stick and waving it around and 20 minutes later coming back through the curtain and it being as loud leaving as you, when you went out through the curtain. We work to perform, we work to entertain our audience and there is nothing like the rush of just getting in there and just getting amped up, man, and, and fighting. It's a hell of a rush. I know for us as listeners and fans, and I, I'm sitting in my chair. I'm watching Collision, and then I'm like, oh, my God, there's Arn. Because you and I, I had no idea you were going to be coming out. But it was in Greensboro, and I'm like, this is so freaking cool. And I text you afterwards. But it's like, man, you just pick up the mic. Never a loss for word. There's no brain farts or whatever the phrase is. Just the delivery is on, and I'm like, man, it's like he doesn't have to be on TV for months at a time, and he's just so natural and just comes off just so easy delivering those lines, man. And I was just curious if you still get the butterflies or no. It's just it's just easy at this point. I get the rush, but I'm not nervous in a negative way. You okay. know that I'm afraid I'm going to screw this up. It, it's it, if you don't have the butterflies, something's the matter with you. Absolutely, you know? yeah. You know, because a live wrestling event, being out there live, well, even if it's a TV taping, it's just a, it's an incredible experience because everybody's playing off of everybody. 